Generic greetings and welcome to Science Insanity, a channel podcast thing dedicated to bringing my love of science fiction in all its wondrous, glorious, stupid insanity to you. And along for the ride is my wonderful assistant Steve, playing the role of the science illiterate. He knows basically nothing and just like the audience of Layman is along for the ride to meme and laugh and be generally stupid the whole way. Say hello, Steve. Hello. The classic intro. And today... We are going to be looking at my favorite mech of all time, the best mech in all of Battletech, and if you disagree, you are wrong. Alternate opinions will not be tolerated on this channel, I run it like a dictator. We are talking, of course, of Steppy Boy himself, the King Crab, the greatest assault mech ever. I love this thing. Are you ready to dive into it, Steve? Of course. Oh, this is going to be so, so much fun. Oh, the King Crab, King Stabo, King Meat Slab. God, I... King Meat Slab. I love this thing so much. It is amazing. So, let's talk about why the King Crab is the best. The King Crab was designed by Kassara Weapons in 2700s and entered production in 2741 officially. This mech is a little special, however. There are few mechs that do fit this mold, but the King Crab is special to me because it was designed to be an absolute sledgehammer of death, and it wasn't made to be some special contract padding or money-making ploy to con the Star League out of its money. Oh no, the Crab was especially ordered by the soup stock man himself, the man, the myth, the legend, Alexander Kerensky. Oh, the clans are angry about that. Yet another invention by Kerensky that is truly and only for the inner sphere to play with. The King Crab is one of those mechs that has honestly really always bugged me about how it's treated. I see this all the time in background mechs and stuff. Like, it's just kind of there, like included in DLC or is some off to the side thing or just outright not really seen much in the tabletop in the community. And I think that's because there are so many people that love the proverbial faces of the franchise, and the king was a fugly mother lover early on. Remember how I told you that we're going to enjoy some good old king crab art? Well, I'm going to show you what this thing used to look like. It's a pancake! It's a wide boy. <laughs> it's so ugly. It's so ugly. It's genuinely amazing to me how this turned into the king crab we know and love. And just so that everybody can see, let me find a uh, let me find a real good image of one that I can throw up there to just absolutely T-pose on everyone else in the community. Ooh, this one looks pretty nice. It's even got a fancy yellow paint scheme. Yellow is the worst color to paint, by the way. Look at that. Like how how did Pancake Wide Boy become this monstrosity wrecker of worlds. How did this happen? Uh, you see, they, they just shaved off the sides of his head, man. It was actually hair that was growing out there. It wasn't, like, actual metal. So they just shaved it off, and uh, it it grew. It hit a growth spurt. The That's king the king crab had, like, an afro in his teens, and he grew out of it into a fade as he got older. It, it's exactly what happened. Despite the fact that the king crab used to be absolutely disgusting, it is not that anymore. It is not only beautiful now, it, it wasn't, but it's beautiful now, and it is, and was, one of the best assault mechs ever built, actually, in the lore. No, I am not biased, it literally says on the wiki, word for word, and I quote, get ready, this one's a doozy, <clears throat> The King Crab is one of the most fearsome battle mechs to have ever existed. Its primary weapons, super heavy autocannons mounted in its arms, can strip the armor off of any mech in a few bursts, if not outright destroy it. Its secondary weapons give the slow King Crab the firepower to see off attackers attempting to pick it off at range, and while not sporting the heaviest armor of any assault mech ever, there are absolutely no weak points to its protection. The only reliable way to destroy a King Crab is with overwhelming numbers of heavy and assault mechs, and casualties will be suffered in the attempt. That is an amazing quote, and I love it. Sounds like people just need to get good, and they wouldn't have an issue destroying it, if I'm being honest, I mean. Would you want to fight with the Crabbo? No. no. Exactly. You mess with the Crabbo, you get the Stabbo. Everybody understands that. Not, not only that, okay. 
but Kerensky had a direct hand in its design process. Not super involved, obviously, but there the entire time, and basically demanded that the King Crab be capable of face tanking everything while being powerful enough to kill any other mech in existence with only a salvo or two. For most, they never got the second. One was enough. The King Crab was originally designed to be an all-purpose assault mech that was the king of the battlefield, hence the name. It had state-of-the-art and quite impressive communications and command systems built onto the mech's back. Most images do not have it, but some of them you can find. It's got a couple of big antennas basically like sticking out the back of the mech. That's the uplink to all of the other mechs and stuff, and that's its special communication system. Is it uh, so exposed like uh, the mm. Rifleman's? Like in um, <laughs> sort of, not really. I mean, the King Crabs, the way it was before they removed it was basically just antennas, like the same way that tanks and like Humvees and stuff nowadays have just big antennas. They're not super vulnerable, like they would have to take a direct hit and they're very small, so not super, but they are exposed, so I guess technically if someone sweeped a laser over top, they could cut it off, but I mean, the Rifleman's more exposed, so who really cares? These systems allowed the King Crab to basically data link with other mechs and not only improve their performance and accuracy, but also share information and compute targeting solutions for devastating multi-mech volley fire. As the mech was tested, however, it became clear that the advanced command and control systems weren't really up to par. They weren't performing particularly well, so they were removed in favor of more standard individual components, and instead the weight savings went towards more armor, ammo, and heat sinks. The Atlas, one of the most famous face of the franchise type mechs I mentioned earlier, was actually designed by good old Soupstock as well. But this time, it was to be more of an all-rounder. Better sensors, more versatile weapons, so close range, medium range, and long range, and more survivability at the cost of no longer being hyper-specialized to fucking obliterate everything it was fighting. The Atlas was basically the quintessential assault mech, while the King Crab became the rocket-powered sledgehammer of God, hitting whatever force it was sent up against. As for the armaments of said King Crab, Oh boy, do we have some oh guns on this thing. So, the King Crab's main weapons were a pair of the biggest guns and arguably the most powerful guns ever made and fielded by the Inner Sphere. So remember how we talked about AC-20s being like the biggest thing that you have to throw on a mech that's reasonably usable? Yes. Yeah, they're, they're very big guns, basically like massive naval cannons slapped into this thing's arm, okay? Okay. They were powerful enough to be a significant threat to the clans when they invaded like 600 years later, although they would be altered to weaker Gauss cannons to deal with the fact that the clan clans had an insane range advantage over Inner Sphere AC-20s. But those guns in their heyday, oh my god, those guns were the death giver model of Autocannon 20, fast reloading with improved performance, the greatest possible way of sending someone to hell with style. Now, Autocannon 20s in general, like I mentioned, are quite short range, hence the later Gauss rifles to deal with the clans in the Clan Buster variant of the King Crab. But AC-20s are inarguably one of the most powerful guns that are actually usable and not some stupid cheese build that people are going to spam me with in the comments down below after this, like a Long Tom or a Thumper. The Long Tom and Thumper, respectively, are like the biggest guns ever made. They are a massive piece of semi-self-propelled artillery and in lore, would actually genuinely straight up knock over a mech even if it was bracing that tried to fire it. So, so basically the P-1000 rat, if it, like, actually existed. Pretty much, yeah. It kind of ludicrously over the top. Those two autocannons that the King Crab had could Thanos snap most other mechs out of this universe by themselves, but they were short range. To account for this weakness, the King Crab also had an LRM-15 mounted in one of its shoulders and a large laser in the other. Now if you'll remember our Rifleman video from last week, Shameless Self Plug, go check that out if you want to see us talk about um, the best of the worst options. And even if you don't want to see us talk about it, go watch it anyway. 
Yeah, that's true. Even if you don't want to watch it, it's not a question. Go do it right now and then come back and rewatch this video because more watch minutes are better. Now, like I was saying, the LRM-15 and the large laser allowed the King Crab to put down an impressive amount of fire at long range and do quite a bit of both splash damage with the missile spread and pinpoint damage to an enemy as they close the distance with the laser. Despite the power of the King Crab, part of the design intentions by Kerensky needed it to be incredibly rugged and well defended. In a straight up fight, the King Crab would probably beat almost anything that it was fighting at close range, but if it was breaking down constantly, was a nightmare to maintain, or if it had severe issues or was fragile and just got annihilated, then it would be an incredibly useless design considering how goddamn chunky it was and difficult it was to build. To this end, the King Crab was designed with fewer advanced components, or lost tech as you know, modern battle tech would call it. During the days of the Star League, those super high-end components were still very available and easy to replace, but they were super high-end and had a nasty habit of breaking, needing to be repaired, or being a little bit unfunctional if not maintained properly. So to this end, the King Crab was designed with basically ultra-tested, super rugged, very durable components that would basically mean similar to the Sherman tank in real life, this thing could operate on the other side of the galaxy, run it rugged into the ground, completely tear it apart, cover it in mud and drown it, and it would still be perfectly fine to just get back up and keep moving so long as you dust it off and give it a little bit of an oiling. It was extremely, extremely reliable. And, when we get onto the armor and the survivability, there is a stark difference between the King Crab and most other battle mech designs. You see, you'll notice that most mechs are blocky brick shithouses on legs that walk around like geriatrics. That's because the armor is designed in an all-or-nothing style, with notable weak points or gaps placed strategically where the mech was least likely to take shots in order to save on weight. Stuff like the rear of the knee, or the inner armpit for lack of a better term, the bottom of arm joints, certain areas around the cockpit, stuff like that was generally cut down on the armor in order to save a few tons here or there to put more towards armor or, or more towards armor in the important areas or ammo or weapons or that kind of stuff. The King Crab was not like this. While it carried less armor than most other assault mechs, it was designed far, far better for soaking damage. The King Crab, despite being just as heavy as an Atlas, stands notably shorter by like a solid 20-25%. In fact, I actually have an image here, and it's a comparison between three assault mechs. I want you to take a look at this. On the left you have the Atlas, in the center is the King Crab, and on the right is the Dire Wolf, one of the most advanced clan assault mechs. Look how much shorter the King Crab is compared to the Atlas, and that it's notably a little shorter than the Dire Wolf. Despite the fact that this thing is one of the heaviest mechs ever built, it's very short. It's about the size of a lot of heavy and some of the taller medium mechs, so it's, it's pretty small considering its size. Small considering its size. I mean, it's super heavy, know, it's, I... it's really wide, and it's it, really fast. It's dirty. <laughs> it's, it's sturdy. My, mo like my mother says I'm husky. The reason is because of the design of the King Crab, primarily in the reverse bow-legged design that it has, allowing it to squat far lower while still being able to move fine, and in some cases when the mech is crouching, it can get down to like half the size of an atlas. It's very, very small and easy to hide behind cover when you're trying to. And because the weapons that it has for long ranges are mounted up on its shoulders, it can basically peek a tiny amount of the mech over a building or over a hill and still be able to poke you with its missiles and laser. It's a very economical design. You will also notice that the King Crab, unlike the Atlas, the Fatless, is smooth. Atlas. Look, look at those curves. Look at the gentle slope of its armor. Look at all of those wonderful smoothed out angles and rounded edges compared to the Atlas literally just being a brick. It's a giant square with a bowling ball on top for a head. Damn, girl, you got some nice curves on you. <laughs> It does, though. It's the most attractive assault mech, and I'm tired of pretending it's not. Anyways, 
Something that hits an atlas in the leg will just straight up transfer that energy into it. It's, it's flat metal, right? It absorbs all the hell that you throw at it. The king crab, while not super... Are we going angled armor designs here? Is this what... <laughs> yeah, I know. It's insane. We're talking about angled armor. That's where we're going for. So, like I was mentioning, you know, the, the Atlas just face tanks everything. And the Atlas is arguably more survivable because it does have way more armor than the King Crab does. But the King Crab's really small stature and heavily sloped armor means in a lot of cases, while not super effective against missiles and lasers because, like, they don't give a shit about angling. One of them explodes, the other is a laser. It will still be able to completely shrug off most smaller autocannon rounds and machine gun fire and, like, smaller, like, kinetic weapons, as they will just deflect off the armor. Or they will just outright miss, because again, it's a very small target for an assault mech and at really long ranges, it can be quite difficult to hit it if it's using terrain as a good advantage to hide behind. It also lets it be stealthy, like I've mentioned, because at long ranges, the king crab is squat. Sensors can actually mistake it for a medium mech or a really big heavy, like a fat heavy mech, if it's in really rough terrain like a jungle or a city or something with lots of smoke and damage already existing in the environment. Imagine walking through a jungle, expecting to find like a hunchback or a wolverine like some big chunky medium mechs, then exiting a thicket and BAM! The rectum wrecker itself staring you down at point blank range well within pinching distance. Can I get you to repeat the name? <laughs> Please? <laughs> I just want to make sure I heard you correct. <laughs> no, you heard me perfectly fine the first time, and no, we no, shall no, move no. on as if nothing... No, I, 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 didn't... I think I need confirmation of what no, I, I heard. I didn't, I didn't say anything. What are you talking about? Uh-huh. <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> By the way, speaking of pinching distance, so you know how the King Crab has those, like, um, gun shields over its things? The reason it's yes. got that is because the weapons it's using are so expensive and so big and so scary, a lot of enemy combatant, like, mech warriors and stuff will try to shoot them and damage them before you can reasonably use them. Because otherwise, there's a really good chance they're not getting the chance to fight you afterwards. Those AC-20s will obliterate people. So what they did to design around that is they put these really big or really heavily armored gun shields on the top and bottom operated pneumatically that open and close in time with the gunfire. When nothing is happening, they can open a little bit, just enough for the shell to clear through or be closed completely, or if they really need to, they can open full wide to help bleed out heat or to make it a little bit easier to aim, because when they're closed, you gotta be a little more careful where you're pointing them, right? However, a lot of king crabs have been modified to actually use the pinchers as a melee weapon. And I'm going to try to find a picture of one of them that has been heavily modified to do that because they are so good. They look so funny. Oh, here we go. Wonderful, wonderful 3D model where instead of the gun shields, we're using big ol' spooky grabbers. Big ol' spooky grabbers. What else, what else do you describe that as? Look at it. It's the same kind of thing, but instead of using just normal gun shields, now they're really big and meant for grabbing people. Imagine this thing grabbing you in its stupid little claws, and then you're just literally face-planted into an AC-20. There is no escape. The only solution is death. Chainsaws at the end of it there, or is that just the, uh... Uh, the, the I think those are... I think those are just grabbers... Um, I don't think they're chainsaws. I think there is another version that actually does have chainsaws. Oh, here we go. Because we can call that one the, the Grip Reaper. Yeah, I, I don't I don't I don't know if this is I don't know if this is canon, but this one, I love this one. Look at the claws on this sucker. Look at this one. That actually does have it looks like it actually has some kind of like pneumatic spikes or something in there. It's gonna grab you and it's, it's gonna teeth. squish you. Yeah, it's got teeth. It's so good. It's an amazing little part of the mech, and I love it. It also is a big reason why it has the crab part of the name. It's really big, it's got pinchers, king crab. There you go. Amazing. Despite the fact that I have spent the really last- radical name design here. Yeah, exactly. But like I was saying, while I may have spent the last 20 minutes and will continue to spend another 20 minutes just shamelessly filleting the king crab, it does have huge downsides. Some of those 
are a little silly and based on how it was designed, so we have to go over those. Firstly, the biggest problem is its lack of staying power, and the second one is its general lack of mobility, and we'll, we'll start with that one first. The King Crab isn't exactly slow, especially not for an assault mech, it's, a, it's on the speedier side, but because of its main weapons being brawling range armaments, you gotta be pretty close to use them, it's very vulnerable to being outflanked, kited, or outmaneuvered. And especially good mech warriors, namely clanners and some very competent mercenaries, can take a King Crab apart from extreme long range if they're willing to spend the time and effort to outmaneuver it, give up their positions, keep repositioning and stuff, rather than risking a straight up fight. It's still gonna take a lot of time though, because the King Crab is very tanky and you're probably gonna have to wail on it quite a bit, but that's still a severe weakness. It does not enjoy being out in open fields where people can see it coming from a long way away. This also means, despite its long range weapons, that the King Crab is almost relegated to very rough terrain and city combat, where it can come around a corner, blast someone into orbit, and then immediately retreat back behind cover to wait for the next person it's going to basically team rocket. The second big weakness, staying power. The King Crab does not carry much ammunition similar to the Rifleman, only a few tons per weapon depending on the design and what versions of autocannons and missiles it's using. Unlike the Rifleman, however, it has no heating problems, which means the King Crab can basically go ham from the minute go and only really needs to stop because the bin is dry. Sadly, nothing lasts forever. And this is where the true tragedy of the Crabo comes in. Because you see, despite the weaknesses, it was a widely loved mech. This thing was fantastic. Everybody wanted them. And when Kerensky left, he tried to take as many people as possible with him, or sorry, not as many people, as many King Crabs with him as possible in the Long Exodus because they were just that goddamn good. But once he noped out of there, there weren't too many production facilities for the King Crab because it was very big and very specialized. And when the Succession Wars kicked off, the production facilities and the King Crabs were some of the very first casualties of the Succession Wars because not everyone had them. And I need to explain that. You see, when the Terran hegemony fell, which is where like all of King Crab manufacturing was, only of the few of the great houses had actually managed to capture Terran hegemony worlds with factories capable of making them and the plans to actually do so, and none of the sides that didn't have it wanted to deal with them because they were basically a hard counter to any other assault mechs that they met in close combat. So, for a very long time, the King Crab became lost tech, as every factory was given a sun to the forehead by the other great houses, and any of them that were on the battlefield were also treated to the same luxury, I guess you could say. I would call it a luxury. <laughs> I mean, I don't think most would. To be to be fair, though, come on, we had this conversation in a previous video as well, like. It's an honor that you are so goddamn scary that someone looks at you and goes, nuke it, that guy, specifically him, nuke him on his forehead. That's, that's, a, yes, that's, that's an honor. Now, Comstar, of course, doing Comstar things, did manage to maintain a rather large force of them. Basically, all of them that didn't go with Kerensky got hoovered up by Comstar, and they even managed to secretly commandeer a factory and keep it working in, on the down low while they used it to make spare parts and new production models to replace the wear and tear losses that they were experiencing just over the generations. So Comstar maintained quite a hefty amount of King Crabs over the years, and they would play a very, very special role in the Battle of Tukiad. There is also a picture that I want to find. Okay. It is amazing, and it shows a Comstar King Crab hiding in some jungles waiting to ambush the clans. Oh, I found it! <laughs> He's done it! I've done it! I found it! Now I- oh god, the quality of this image is so bad. Never mind, I went to the source and I found the true image. Oh, it's so beautiful. Check this thing out. Comstar King Crab hiding in the bushes as a bunch of clan Jade Falcon mechs walk by. What does the King Crabo do? Literally reaches out and crushes the head of what looks like a Timberwolf with one of them pinchers. Look at that! 
It's <laughs> such a good image. I love it. Look at that big, glorious bastard just sitting up there looking fantastic. Also, if you look down in the corner, you notice a, a clanner elemental. You look at the dudes climbing on the elemental. They're like yeah. shooting him in the visor. That's 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 really good. This this image goes so hard. I love it. I'm glad I found that. That makes this video so much better. Also, because I can, here's another really, really fancy piece of fan art that just looks so glorious. Look at the paint scheme on this thing. It is beautiful. I wish I had one like that. It's gold. Look at this absolute extra bastard. It's all the mechanical parts are gold. Amazing. Yin and yang moment. I mean, it's white and black. It's not exactly anyway, yin and yang. I, I, I'm calling it yin and yang. Okay. You, you got the you got the black dot on on the right arm. Uh, so you, you can't see the other side. So you don't know if there's a white dot there. So it very well could be. Now, there's not much else to really talk about the King Crab. There aren't too many other special neat things to go over. There's not really too much else because. Honestly, it's basically just what happened after the Succession Wars, and I briefly mentioned that the King Crab was one of the first casualties of the Succession War, and that's true, but it endured for quite a while longer after that. You see, the King Crab was so simple because of the way it was designed, it was so easy to repair and maintain and simple, that unlike a lot of other Star League mechs that could just never be replaced or repaired because they didn't have the technology anymore, the King Crab could have some of that special lost tech removed from it and replaced with less effective stuff that the Great Houses had. Granted, that would make the King Crab less effective or weaker armor or slower or whatever because they had to remove components out of it, but it allowed them to keep going a lot longer than most other of those specialized mechs did. They had to sacrifice a lot, don't get me wrong. Ferrofibrous armor was like the thing that they removed from it because that was some of the biggest weight savings, but it survived for quite a while. By the time of the Third Succession War, I believe, which is like a good 300 years into the era of war that saw, you know, nukes being used just everywhere willy-nilly, there was still a few of them left kicking around, mostly in like great houses, personal armories for like nobles and royals and stuff, but yeah, they were still kicking around. And aside from that, I guess I'm just going to talk about some of my most favoritest mechs ever, because there's a few different versions of it that are really, really fun. So, remember how we talked about just the big auto, uh, the big AC-20s that the King Crab had by default? Yeah. Yeah, well, there, there, there are some really, really good refits of it. So, the King Crab 007, right? Okay. The James Bond version? It is absolutely fantastic, and I can make this joke and be incredibly serious. This King Crab version has a fucking amazing rack. What? <laughs> okay, so instead of the regular autocannons, this one was developed after they had begun recovering a lot of Star League era tech and after the clans had invaded. So they uncovered a number of special weapons that the Star League basically took to its grave with it for a very long time. Those being rotary autocannons, RACs. Those are a regular autocannon, but instead of it being an ultra version where, you know, it's semi-auto, this is full auto. It is a main battle tank gun sized minigun. And they replaced the autocannon 20s with two rack 5s on each of the King Crab's arms. This thing could put thousands of rounds down range in minutes, and these are shells big enough to turn your torso into paste. It is fantastic. I love it. It's so stupid. Oh, sea whiz, but bigger bullets is what I'm hearing. Sea whiz, but bullets like the size of your arm. Yeah, pretty much. Very, very large and in charge. There are also some, some pretty entertaining hero mechs, but I'm just going to talk about one which is my personal favorite, my, my absolute favoritest of all favorite mechs, and that's the Kaiju. I gotta find a picture of this because it's, it's genuinely a really, really cool paint scheme. Oh, here's actually... So right up in the top left corner, that is the Kaiju. That's its paint scheme. And you can also see those antennas on the back. Those are That means that this is a command variant of the King Crab. It's got all the fancy communications equipment on the back there. I just really like it. And when I say it's a hero mech, for uh, if you don't know what that means, basically special named characters 
are using special named mechs. They show up in the lore, in books, and video games, whatever, that kind of stuff, right? And they generally have some significance in their own story or in the greater universe of Battletech. And the kaiju is fantastic because the entire like mercenary company that this thing is assigned to they're, they're nothing but like kaiju movie monster references the the actual name is called greenberg's godzillas that's the name of it and it is the kaiju king crab hero mech instead of the ac20s it's equipped with two ppcs in each arm so four of them which means that it has an insane amount of energy weapons this is the one that i use in mech warrior online 12 out of 10, excellent, I love it. Yeah, that's pretty much everything I can think of to do with the King Crab. This thing is amazing, I love it. It is the best mech in Battletech, no arguments shall be heard. No, no arguments. <laughs> Screw you all. <laughs> I'm gonna patrol the comment section of this video for like ever more, and I'm gonna delete everyone that's being negative about my my absolute- I'm gonna come back to it every three days. Every three days so I'm gonna come back month. to it. First month he's gonna be checking it daily. <laughs> After that it's gonna be every three days and he's gonna delete all negative comments about it. And that's pretty much the end of the video. I have nothing else to add. You got any questions or anything final to say at the end? I like green. All right. I don't Fair know. Enough. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for your wonderful insight, Steve. What very, a meme. Very, very thoughtful. Very, very thoughtful. And that's the end of the video. I hope you've had a wonderful day. Hope you enjoyed it. Okay, goodbye. Soup stock.